Greetings from Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. One of the seven natural wonders of the world. A truly breathtaking place filled with natural beauty and really something you can't see anywhere else. But there's also a whole nother side to Niagara Falls filled with all the crazy cheesy tourist attractions you can imagine from haunted houses, wax museums, laser mazes, ferris wheels, ripleys, all that kind of crazy stuff. This video we're going to show you everything. The best things to do by the falls, the best things to do outside the falls. I'm the legend, that's Molly, and here are the things to do in Niagara Falls. Let's kick off the tour with what is really the most famous thing to do here in Niagara Falls, and that is the Maid of the Mist boat. Now, a couple years ago, they did change this up. Uh, the Maid of the Mist boat now only runs on the American side of the falls. If you're on the Canadian side of the falls like we are, you ride the Hornblower cruises, and uh, it's cool, but man, you get soaked. It's super windy. A lot of fun. I, I quite enjoyed it. I liked it. Yeah, I, I've been on this before. But you have not. No. But uh, it, it's it's kind of amazing. The views you get are spectacular. Uh, there, uh, the crazy thing in between the two falls is more birds than I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. I guess that's probably where Batman lives over there. No, your sleeves will get very. Oh, soaked. everything. Yeah, they give you this poncho, but it doesn't. It helps a little bit, but uh, it helps for the name. Molly had hers tied up, and her hair is still super wet. I mean, it's fun though. I mean, if you're coming here, you really—it's kind of—it's a, kind of, a must-do, I would say. Absolutely. And uh, a rare excuse to use the selfie stick GoPro option, which I don't even know why we have within the loop. All right, guys. Molly has a tip for you if you're going on the horn blower. So. Next time, if I ever do this again, I'm gonna roll up my sleeves so that they stay dry. That right now, you I'm just, like to have both your I'm shirt, like, shirt, and yeah. your jacket. I'm, I'm like soaked. <laughs> There's no dryness here. To get down to the Hornblower Niagara Cruises, you could take the included with your admission elevators, or for three dollars more, you could go for a ride on the funicular. And guys, I'm not gonna turn down a ride on a funicular. Not every day you get to do that. Some pretty cool views you get from there as well. And it's it's a funicular, it's a, they're just awesome. Not too many of them out there. Now when you come to view the falls themselves, there's actually a really, really nice park right here. Uh, very easy to walk into. They keep it very nice. It's pretty, like there's flowers and statues and tons and tons and tons of viewing locations for you to see the falls. So right by the, uh, the Welcome Center, you get a really, really spectacular view of the Horseshoe Falls. So one thing you're going to want to do is see the falls during the day, but you also want to come back at night because they light them up in different colors. Uh, my camera doesn't like right now, but like the Horseshoe Falls are blood red. In the Welcome Center is where you get uh, your tickets and go on your adventure for Journey Behind the Falls. So if you really want to get up close and personal with Niagara Falls, it's the place to do it. I remember when I was here 20 years ago, I was not super impressed with it, but you get, you do get right there by the bottom of the falls, and then you look at the, like the, essentially the backside of water through a uh, like maintenance kind of tunnel. So um, if you want to do everything here in Niagara Falls, it might be something you consider. For me, it's something I'm going to skip. So we just got out of Niagara Fury, the creation of the falls, and it's a inter really interesting attraction. You have a pre-show with an animated beaver that tells you all about the falls and uh, you know how they were made. It was a pretty good animation. And then the main show is something very different. It feels very much like Epcot. It's the best way I could describe it. It was a seamless Circle Vision 360 film, so you could know, look all the way around you, and there was screens everywhere. And there are so many in-theater effects from waterfalls, uh, fog, a moving platform, and lots and lots of tech. Uh, I thought it was really good. It's definitely, it felt, the best way I could describe it, it felt like an Epcot style thing. Like if there was a Niagara Falls Pavilion in Epcot, this would be the attraction. Uh, Molly, thoughts? No, I really enjoyed it. I did not expect that. Um, if you are in the front row or the back row, I feel like you get the wettest. Yes. So uh, if that's a concern, don't stand there. Yeah, but it, it's, it's pretty cool. I recommend it. A little pricey, it is $16. Um, it's included with some of the adventure passes that are out there. So if you're doing a lot of things, that might be something to consider. But uh, I think it was probably worth it. because I, I mean, but I love theme entertainment. So in the, uh, the Welcome Center, there's a gift shop that sells nothing but maple syrup. This gift shop also features a giant, like, five-foot beaver wearing a hat eating other animals. Now, for the wildest way to see Niagara Falls, it's got to be this. It's called Zipline to the Falls. And look at that view you get. Like, that is amazing. 
Of course, with that kind of view and this kind of zip line, it's not going to be cheap. This probably uh, 20 to 30 second experience is going to run you $60 Canadian. But uh, should be pretty spectacular. We're not going to do it. Looks fun though. Up next on the Adventure Through Nature portion of Niagara Falls, we're going to hop on the the Whirlpool Aero Cable Car. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of neat. It's $16, and you hop on this kind of old timey transportation mechanism that takes you over to the Whirlpool area of the falls. So the falls are going to be that way, and they come over here and circle around like that. But uh, I mean, as a machine, it, it looks pretty wild. Very reminiscent of like the like the Roosevelt Island trams in New York, or from a theme park's perspective, it reminds me of like the the King Kong ride vehicle from Old School Universal. We're gonna go hop on that, which uh, looks cool. I, I love any kind of wacky rides like this, but I'm afraid it's gonna be pretty cold as it's uh, it's the wind's blowing pretty good. So just got off the Whirlpool cable car and it was pretty neat. Um, I would say a little steep at $16 a ride for your maybe seven, eight minute ride. A couple fun facts they do tell you on there because they do have a live spieler talking to you. You cross into and out of the United States four different times on the adventure. And this thing was built in 1916, so it's over 100 years old. Yeah, and they've never had to evacuate it. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, <laughs> and thankful. Um, I would say, I would probably put this on the maybe list of things to do. If you're on your once in a lifetime trip to Niagara Falls, then I would definitely do it. And if you're a big dork like me that enjoys old machines, you're going to want to do it as well. One incredible attraction you do not want to miss if you're visiting Niagara Falls between May and October is this awesome pre-fireworks show. They just do this. They shoot fireworks over the falls for about a five-minute show, and it's really good. Now, sometimes they'll do this every night. Sometimes they'll do it just on the weekend, so be sure to check out when and if they're doing fireworks during your visit. But I would say this is one of my favorite things I saw in the falls, and it was completely free. Uh, just an amazing backdrop for a fireworks show. And it's kind of cool, too, because you're looking like eye level at fireworks. Normally, they're up in the air, but since they launch from the bottom of the gorge, they're kind of at eye level with you. So it's a very unique fireworks show with an amazing setting. Hey, Molly, what time is it? Beer 30. Beer 30. We're here at the, the Grandview uh, restaurant right by the falls. I'm a little food court kind of thing. But talk about, like, an amazing place to just have a beer. Hang out, relax. They got indoor and outdoor seating in that. It's a pretty awesome place to drink a beer. All right, Niagara Falls, you've got my attention. They have not one, but two different funiculars. This one takes you from like the Welcome Center right by the Horseshoe Falls up towards the uh, the casino area. Quick look at that uh, funicular vehicle. 275 for a one-way ride, not bad. Probably the cheapest thing we'll do all trip. This portion of the video is going to focus on Clifton Hill, the street of fun at the falls. This is your cheesy tourism destination of fun. So this big giant Ferris wheel is the Niagara Sky Wheel. One of the more popular ways to see uh, Niagara Falls in the surrounding area. Pretty fun. It's uh, You go in these uh, little pods, they're air conditioned in there. They have a commentary track in there as well. And it's commentary track, like you've got all sorts of buttons in your cabin. So if you wanted to mute the commentary track, you can mute the commentary track. Uh, we rode twice, once during the day and once at night, and I really enjoyed both times. Um, this is on the Clifton Hill Fun Pass. The reason we rode twice, if you buy that Fun Pass online, you get two rides on the Ferris wheel. I liked it. I thought it was cool. Uh, 13 bucks if you don't buy a Fun Pass. So, you know, whether that's worth it to you, I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, I thought it was cool. Molly, what do you think? I enjoyed it. I think uh, the nighttime and the daytime are two different experiences. Uh, the nighttime definitely highlighted the street more than the falls, while the daytime did the opposite. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was very, uh, very good views. Yeah, it was a fun ride. If you're looking for mini golf in the Niagara Falls region and you want to play outside, uh, I think the, the big course is this dinosaur adventure golf. There are tons of big dinosaurs, not moving dinosaurs, unfortunately, all around a, a volcano that looks like it probably used to spew water or something like that, and now it does nothing. But uh, the course looks cool and big dinosaurs, so that's a plus. Next up, we're gonna check out the Great Canadian Midway, which is a big entertainment center. Probably the biggest one on Clifton Hill. 
<laughs> so inside the Great Canadian Midway, there's actually a dark ride, complete with an animatronic talking uh, spook out front. And this is a Sally Shoot'em dark ride, similar to if you've been on Ghost Blasters or Blue Blasters throughout the country. And I love that, like, if you look at the outside of it, there's a skeleton that pops out of the closet wearing 3D glasses. The spookiest ride ever. You know, it's interesting, uh, most of these ride signs say you must be this tall, but not here, you must be this high. And based on what's legal here in Niagara Falls, you can be pretty high. So we just got off the Ghost Blasters 3D, and I thought it was pretty good. You know, uh, some of these rides are not in great shape. This one was in very good shape. A lot of effects work. It had some animatronics in there. It wasn't all hideouts. It's got that guy who takes his head off. And I thought it was really well done. Long, way longer than I thought it would be. Um, if, you are, if you're thinking about doing the Fun Pass or you're, you want to spend five bucks, I think it's worth it either way. So the Great Canadian Midway is a giant arcade, complete with all the latest and greatest games. It kind of goes on forever. And uh, if you're going to go to an arcade, I'm, I'm not sure how your, your price value is, but I don't think there's going to be a better selection of arcades anywhere on, uh, in Niagara Falls. This is uh, so many games, so many modern games. Uh, it does seem a bit expensive, but uh, it's cool. They even got like, weird stuff, like straight up Midway High Striker, like you see at uh, the theme parks. The giant wall of prizes here. And uh, with our five free tokens that we both had, we won a shot glass. Souvenir shot glass with the arcade's name on it. So also inside the Midway is Wild West Coaster, which is a, uh, a simulator ride by the guys over at Triotech. And uh, I thought it was fun. It was very cute, uh, very westerny, uh, some good comedy elements. I really enjoyed it. Molly, thoughts on Wild West Coaster? No, I really, really enjoyed it. It was really good. Fun to have. Pretty solid ride film. I'm gonna play some wizard golf where they welcome you with an animatronic dragon. So wizard golf is actually pretty cool. Uh, way better than I thought it would be. This is the best I've seen of these like blacklight style mini golf courses. Um, it's kind of a combination between uh, knockoff Harry Potter meets Merlin and stuff. You got, you know, tripped out Hedwig here. A whole bunch of spell books hanging from the air. This hole is actually pretty cool. Like you hit it in here and it goes up in a little elevator and then comes down. You've got a, just a, this hole was not one of the more spectacular ones, just lawn gnomes. But my favorite one is this uh, very worried lawn gnome who looks like he's eating cheese. Nothing wrong with that. No, that's what you do when you're, you're nervous. I do. Uh, more dragons over here. Uh, so far we've done 17 out of the 18 holes, the 18th holes upstairs, and Molly is actually winning by one. That never happens at mini golf. You got a uh, not Aragog over there. Big tree face dude over here. This hole is kind of neat too. You hit it in a place, sort of like clink goes on down. Uh, the theming level in here was cool. They had a really nice background music, and then when you hit the ball into the holes, it wasn't really effects, but it would make like noises and stuff like that, which didn't make a ton of sense, and just kind of frightened you every time you would get in the hole. Oh look, Molly, a wand holder. Just like at our house. Just like your house. We have more wands. Uh, we do have more wands, yes. A couple cool holes over here. You get this volcano hole, a sea monster. Um, this one I really liked. You got the dragon's tongue as a loop-de-loop. -loop. And I think there's just a little bit else to show you while we're here downstairs before the epic finale of hole 18 upstairs to see if Molly could finish off her upset victory. Obviously encouraged by the Harry Potter decor. <laughs> All right, just want to show you the last couple holes over here because there is some cool stuff. You've got this giant dragon, like robo kind of dragon in the corner next to a different dragon. You've got uh, Merlin here trying to say like, hey, shoot your ball in there. But uh, a pretty cool looking dragon over here. I was hoping he was gonna move and stuff, but he, he doesn't move. All right. So we just got out a zombie attack, which is a, uh, a Triotech motion simulator with guns in 3D. It's pretty fun. 
Also, I love the bench they have outside as advertisement with the guy just shooting, sitting there. Uh, there were six people on our simulator. I came in second. I was pretty bummed with myself. Molly, dead last. I came in third in the practice round. Thank you very much. All right. Well, practice counted. Uh, but the ride, the ride itself is really fun. Like, I would say the zombie tech is much, much better than the Wild West coaster. Like, you could tell that this is a much more, uh, more recent product. Yeah. And, uh, more modern. Yeah. So there are a lot of haunted houses here in Niagara Falls. The first of which we're going to show up in this video is Nightmares. Now there's no cool like animatronics or anything outside, but their marketing is fantastic. Like they have this banner outside that's saying over 100,000 people have chickened out. And on like the digital more recent billboards, it's like now 14, no, 140,000 people have chickened out. I'm not the big haunted house guy, so this is probably going to get a pass for me. Time for ice cream, and we're going to do that at here at Sweet Jesus. And man, look at these crazy ice cream cones. Just absolutely bonkers looking. We're gonna go for the Red Rapture, which is a vanilla soft serve, red velvet cake, cream cheese icing, raspberry sauce, and meringue crumble. But I mean, everything here looks just wonderful. And here's what that looks like. It is crazy. That, my friends, is an ice cream. Good? Very delicious. I mean, it looks amazing. Yeah, no, very, very delicious. Just grabbed a couple of beers here at Niagara Brewing Company where a squirrel is desperately trying to get in. Um, pretty good. They do a happy hour from uh, 3 to 4 and then from 7 to 8 where they get some discounts on beer. Relax, they had a really good guitar player in there, so uh, yeah. quite enjoyed it. So if you like go-karts, uh, they have a pretty sweet looking go-kart, like multi-level, big down ramp. And like more go-karts than I've ever seen anywhere. Like look at all those go-karts that got ready to go and then the ones on the track. Like this is a, like a go-kart machine. So this has to be one of the more bizarre attractions. It's the upside down house, which you essentially walk through a house that's upside down. It's not particularly big. I think it costs around 10, 12 bucks to go through. And it's just an upside down house. That is uh, something you don't see every day, right? So I think my favorite thing in all of Clifton Hill might be this giant cheeseburger wielding Frankenstein statue that exists between a Burger King and the House of Frankenstein haunted house. It's, it's like 20 feet high, 20 feet long. It's spectacular. Here is the House of Frankenstein haunted house. Have you people heard of a modern invention called a mirror lately? Or a toothbrush? I love how there's a robot trying to get you come in by insulting you. Fill your pants Fill your pants scary. And that is another one of these haunted houses. There's a better look at that animatronic there. More animatronics over here. It's got live actors inside. And Frankenstein. All right, you got a crystal maze, mirror maze attraction, complete with a singing buzzard outside, as well as an animatronic, uh, like a minor mouse. I've never been a big fan of mirror mazes, but I uh, do love the robots that are outside of this one. So there are a million different Canadian gift shops on Clifton Hill here, but this one might be my personal favorite because out front is a giant Mountie Moose that you can get your picture with. And it's pretty snazzy in the big totem pole as well. This wonderful neon spinning side welcomes you to Louis Tussauds Wax Works, which is another wax museum here. And uh, we just went through it, it's pretty solid. Um, they've got a lot of interesting things in there. Um, some stuff like was clearly pretty well aged, like uh, this wax museum has been here for apparently 50 years, and some of it feels pretty old. And then there's other stuff that's like, they have a room, essentially they, they do a, like a Hall of Horrors area, and they have an area from the Shinning uh, Treehouse of Horror from The Simpsons, which I just completely fanboyed out for. I also got to take my picture in a DeLorean, and I got to take my picture next to Fat Bastard from Austin Powers. So, uh, I give it a thumbs up. Here is the mystery maze, Get Lost. And I believe it's just like a big giant maze in which you get lost. I mean, who doesn't love a beaver tail? It's a, a wonderful dessert right here next to Cheeseburger Frankenstein. So here's some of the varieties of beaver tails you can get. We went with the Browie, 
It smells really good. Is it going to be too hot to eat? It is hot. <coughs> it's good though. Oh yeah. Another haunted house here is Dracula's Haunted Castle. And the thing that I found interesting about this one is that you get to pick how scary you want your experience. So medium, hot, or hardcore. <laughs> and then there's uh, all sorts of spooky things inside. Another gift shop is the Blue Moose Training Company. And it's cool because you can take your picture with a giant blue moose wearing a Canada hat. So something we're not going to have time to do, which bums me out, because I'm a huge fan of the old-timey funhouse, and this looks amazingly fun. You can see what you and it's got a talking like gnome world. trying to invite you in. It's at old-timey funhouse. No surprise, they have a Guinness World Records Museum. Get your picture taken with the world's tallest man. Spin this ball. I think they have one of these at Disneyland? Or they used to? Disney World they have one. Yeah. And, and you can get your picture as the world's fattest man. There's uh, there's Molly showing up how that works. She's not happy I made her do this. Not at all. Now going to wander into Adventure City. <laughs> Games, rides, and fun with Mario. Uh, this place can be interesting because it, when it first opened it had a Marvel theme. It does no longer carry that theme, but uh, still gonna go check it out. And there's a dark ride in there. Got combat bumper cars with something that totally looks like the X-Men logo on it. A uh, pretty, pretty small looking bumper car adventure. So we just got off Superhero Laser Ride, uh, formerly a Spider-Man attraction. And ooh, it was bad. This is a bad dark ride, and I love dark rides. There was an alligator that came out of the drain. Yes, which I missed because I was on the wrong side of the vehicle. Now I'm sad. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's like eight bucks, but uh, it's it's not worth it even as a dark ride guy. I, I can't. Don't do it. I don't, I, no matter if you shot something. Yeah, nothing happened. happened. Yeah. Or didn't happen. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Also here in Adventure City is a closed safari indoor mini golf course. So Adventure City is part of this giant casino Niagara. Um, I think it's a Sheridan Hotel. It's a very, very big complex. There's a Hard Rock Cafe. But I mean, this is like, I guess their main entrance, but the theming in here is really cool. Like it feels very big, you see. And I guess over here, I'll kind of give you a map to sure show off like all the stuff that's in this giant complex. You got Adventure City, a Rainforest Cafe, Casino Niagara, Hard Rock, an indoor water park, Hershey, another hotel. Like lots of, this is a big complex. Continuing our walk through here, we've got this super fancy chandelier. Also in a Niagara Falls is a uh, totally closed down Planet Hollywood. Still with like the, uh, the movie cars out front. Kind of eerie. As a huge fan of Hershey Park, there's no way I'm not going to go through the entrance of this giant chocolate bar. Love the photo op when you come in. It's uh, one of the life-size Hershey Kisses with the falls in the background. Also, guys, it smells amazing in here. So I found the mother loop, guys. The best part of this Hershey store. The treats. Look at the treats. Oh my gosh, so awesome looking. And the treats don't stop there. They've got small cupcakes. Man, Hershey, oh man. Look at the Reese's Pieces one. Oh, this one's got a full candy bar in it. From one like big American corporate brand to another one, like right next door to Hershey, connected is the Coca Cola Soda Shop, which floats in ice creams and sundaes. If you're dining with kids in uh, Clifton Hill, there is a Rainforest Cafe right there on the strip. 
fun time if you have little ones. So I guess there's a 4D SpongeBob ride. Maybe, I don't know. We were just around there, we did not see a 4D SpongeBob ride, but if they do, it's actually a pretty, pretty good ride film. So on top of that SpongeBob simulator building, there is a, uh, an old Zamperla Samba Tower kind of ride, themed to the Pink Panther. I would assume it has not run in years. But I could be wrong. But there were no, like we went in that building, there were no signs for the ride at all. I mean, when you're in Canada, you really have to get some Tim Hortons. And there is one right here on Clifton Hill. At the end of Clifton Hill is Ripley's Moving Theater 4D. We just came out of it and it's uh, two different like uh, 4D movies, I would say. The first is like a, a water ride, like a water slide slash Pirates of the Caribbean ripoff kind of thing. Harry Potter 2. You thought Harry Potter 2 because it had a basilisk like creature. And then you get uh, two pro movies for the price of one, which is kind of cool. And the second one was like a random space film. Overall, I thought it was okay. I thought the ride system itself felt really, really old. I've been on about a million different ride films, and this felt like it was uh, one of the older ones out there. You know, not terrible, but probably not the first thing I would spend my money on here at Niagara Falls. So if you want to play laser tag, this is, I think, the only place I've seen with laser tag. And that is, I think, uh, Captain Jack's Fun Center. Got a whole bunch of other stuff, too. Mini pods. There's a haunted hallways and uh, things like that. Doesn't look like one of the better fun centers, but uh, you get their combo pass for only 20 bucks and do like six things. So that's probably a pretty good deal. The Sideways Empire State Building is home to Ripley's Believe It or Not. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's more modern than a lot of the Ripley's Believe It or Nots. Has a lot of really neat interactive features. And uh, I had quite a fun time in there. We, you know, probably get 45 minutes of activity in there. And uh, I give it a thumbs up. There's another animatronic trying to get you to go into an attraction. I swear, guys, I'm in heaven right now. Here you got a maze of mirrors and a maze of lasers. Is he an animatronic lion? But the, the Barker guy is the best. Here is the fourth and final haunted house. This one just called the haunted house. And it's got tons of robots. There's one hanging from the ceiling. There's a butler. There's a ghost screen. Oh, this is wonderful. So many robots. I love the guy in the bathtub that talks to the guy on the screen. Cool. And he moves too. This just gets better and better. Here is Movie Land, the Wax Museum of the Stars. And Molly, me and you got to go through this one. I thought it was pretty good. The theming level in the exhibits was a lot of fun. The Wax Museum quality, I don't know. And then it ends with like a mini haunted house. The theming was really good. Yeah, the theming was really good. So towards the end of Clifton Hill, right in between the Sheridan uh, Casino kind of building and the falls, there's a really nice, pretty garden area. Another shot of that uh, garden area. So I researched this a little bit. This casino tower is something that's no longer in use. Uh, it used to be kind of an observation tower. Now it is uh, just essentially it's, it's abandoned more or less and just a billboard for the casino. A little bit off the strip is yet another wax museum. This is the Rock Legends Wax Museum. And uh, definitely does not have the, uh, the big appealing storefront. Have like the, the Beatles walking past Niagara Falls for some reason. Uh, 10 bucks if you want to do it. If you're a big music person, it might be cool. Definitely looks much older than the other ones. If you have little ones, you probably want to visit Bronto's Adventure Playland, which is uh, looks like a big uh, kind of ball pit, wacky fun Welcome land thing. Bronto's Adventure Playland, Niagara's newest and largest. So even this little stand, which is just uh, like a couple of duck crane games has a duck wearing sunglasses on top of it. So there's a lot of different bundles you can buy on Clifton Hill to save you money. One of them is the Clifton Hill Fun Pass, which includes those six attractions there and bonus midway tokens. Let's check out some of the other combo passes. 
So the Ripley's attractions also have a combo ticket. You can do three attractions, the Ripley's Believe It or Not, the Lewis Two Sodes Wax Museum, and the uh, Flying Theater for $20. You can also add in stuff like Wax Hands or Nightmares Fear Factor. The third value pass, you can get the Big Fun Value Pass with a combination of any of those. So something we're not going to do on our things to do in Niagara Falls is uh, visit the Stay High, Live High Smoke Shop. But, well, there are things here in Niagara Falls that are not legal over in the state. So if that's, that's your bag, it's going to be a good vacation for you. So Niagara Falls is home to one proper theme park called Marine Land. It's sort of an animal slash ride park, not too different from SeaWorld, just on a, a smaller, much more budgety scale. A couple of rides, two roller coasters. Uh, not the biggest selection of animals, but uh, it's kind of neat. The, one of the star attractions here is called Sky Screamer. It's a big giant uh, blast em up, shoot em down tower. But the cool thing is it's built on top of a hill, so you get this awesome view of the falls and uh, the city of Niagara Falls. Oh yeah. So not too far from the tourist district in uh, Niagara Falls is Smoke's Poutinerie. We had the opportunity to interview the owner a couple years ago at IAP, and it was the most bonkers interview we've ever done. And it's not Canada if you don't go get poutine. And there it is. We got like the mega size. This is our like l lunch and dinner. It's the triple pork. I think it was like 20 bucks, which is just obscene, but it's really heavy and massive. So for what might be the best view of the falls, there is the Skylon Tower. You can see the cool elevator going up the side of it there. And um, this features a, an observation deck on top. There's also a couple restaurants up there. So if you want to go have a fancy dinner, you could have a fancy dinner. I think there's a buffet and a fancy one up there. The, the fancy one has like a revolving restaurant. Not sure how much it is to go up there. I think it's like uh, probably about 15 bucks or so. And they also feature a 3D, 4D movie all about the falls. Because there's not enough of those in this town. So when you go in the Skyline Tower area, there's an arcade and an old arcade. Like, uh, these games are some pretty ancient games. Well, we have the best Jurassic Park. Did, you gotta, yeah. <laughs> the Lost World. That might be the most modern from Jurassic Park 2. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, this it kind of gives you like a dead mall vibe. It's, um, this is weird. Definitely old games. Like Simple Simon with like knockoff Chucky, Bolingo. It's definitely a weird place, but uh, that ride to the top would probably be pretty cool. But uh, this is, uh, this feels weird. No surprise the tower has a all Canada gift shop with my favorite thing, this Canadian train. So to get to the pedestrian walk, they get these weird stairs. It looks like it's something out of a fun house. So one thing we've noticed, and we had no idea was a thing up here, is skunks. This is the third time in three days of Niagara Falls that we have seen skunks. So just be careful where you're walking. From a distance, like we're nowhere near these skunks. They're pretty cute to look at, but uh, don't want to get sprayed with that stuff. Niagara Falls is home to an IMAX theater in this cool looking pyramid. And I guess they show a IMAX movie all about Niagara Falls. So if you want to learn more about the falls and large format film, go to the pyramid. For uh, reference, the pyramid is right next to the Skyline Tower. Guys, just wanted to show off the view of our uh, from our hotel room. We're staying at the Days Inn on Victoria Avenue. And something we're not going to get to on this trip, we're not big water park people, but that building there is a giant indoor water park. I think you can kind of see some slides through the window. Also, it is crazy that that water park is built on top of a parking garage. Well, one thing about Niagara Falls, there's not a lot of unique places to eat. A lot, a lot of chain restaurants. So we went off the beaten path a little bit about five minutes from the falls and ate here at the Flying Saucer Restaurant, which is a pretty weird looking kind of place. Uh, it kind of has a typical kind of diner menu, I would say. Yeah. Our food was good, not great. I would say if you're looking for somewhere to eat breakfast, the breakfast food, like the people around us had, looked amazing. And the breakfast is served until like 3 p.m., so yeah. we failed on that. We messed up. This is a giant building here at the Falls View Casino, and it's got all sorts of stuff inside of it. And a fountain out front. The casino's got a big food court in it, which is uh, nice. Pretty sections of the casino. You got a whole bunch of shops if you want to do some shopping. Not a whole lot of shopping here in Niagara Falls, right by the falls. And then they got like indoor trees and stuff like that. So in the lobby, you've got this big giant centerpiece. 
I don't really know what it is, but it's really cool looking. Check out all these crazy popcorn flavors. Ketchup, ugh, double butter. So cool. They've also got a pepper palace, which is always a good time. Doesn't appear open though. Oh, they're back in five minutes. So they've got a gelato place, and look at this. They've got like gelato ice cream bars. And look at the cookie sandwiches. I'm not super hungry, so I went with a, a mini ice cream cone. They've also got cannolis, regular gelato. How cool, it's tiny. Not to be confused with friend of the show, Shirtless Joe. Here is Shoeless Joe's Sports Grill. Oh, cheesecake looks good. Sometimes uh, fast food in other countries is kind of weird. Like their KFC serves poutine. So we drove about 15, 20 minutes outside of Niagara Falls to the town of Niagara on the Lake, which is huge for wineries. There's also some craft beer places, breweries, some distilleries, and we're gonna go on a, you know, check out a bunch of them. But if you if you're a wine person, this is an amazing area. Like when we drove to Toronto, we must have drawn past like a hundred different wineries. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're gonna go drink for a little bit here in Niagara on the Lake. So we found our way to the distillery tasting bar. You get three samples for ten dollars. We went with a uh, an ice cask whiskey, a cream whiskey, and an artisanal rosé. And the rosé is not a, like a wine; it's like a, a forty uh, percent alcohol by volume spirit. So uh, pretty cool. This ten bucks, and then if you like any of the bottles, you essentially can use this coupon for eight dollars off a bottle. I'm looking forward to the cream one. So these shot glasses are fantastic. So we're now in the winery section, three samples, eight bucks, and that includes an ice one, big fan ice one. Also, it is just beautiful up here. Like, this is quite the facility. Cool view from the uh, patio area here at the Gretzky Winery. More of the really cool facility here. This is uh, a pond right now, but I think this is an ice rink come the uh, winter time. And they're, buying, they're building a beer garden over there. Guys, look how cool this is if you're traveling with like a fancy bottle of wine. It's a wine skin. Also, as a nerd, this is an awesome souvenir. Uh, Gretzky Estates Winery Puck. Next up, we're at the Niagara Oast House Brewery, which is built out of a barn. We're now inside of the Oast House Brewery. It's cool. Two bucks a sample. And uh, we've had six of the beers, and by far our favorite was this one here. It is a... Uh, Field Berry Milkshake IPA. Yum. So we now made it to our third brewery, which is in like Niagara and Lake in their downtown area, which uh, it's interesting. Like it feels kind of like Main Street USA does at Disney World or like that kind of ideal. Like this. Totally feels like Main Street. Anyway, here's the brewery we're looking for. It's the Exchange in this cool little building. So here's what we got here. It's a six beer flight, ended up being $14. What I love is that your beer, so you, pick, you match the symbol to what's on the menu. What's uh, the response? So that's the Hefeweizen. That system is so cool. These are little like uh, things that can be removed. So we've seen a lot of uh, fun Canadian souvenirs, but these might be the best. Dancing Mountie, Polar Bear, Beaver and Moose. The Moose Hearts Canada. So the last stop on our beer tour of uh, Niagara Lake is here at Silversmith, which I believe is built in an old church. Like you can really tell like the old church and then like the expansion of the building. And this has some e-ticket doors, look at that. It feels like you're going into a haunted house. Or like Muppet's Christmas Carol. And then you go in and it looks like a bar. Awesome. So here at Silver Smith, we got a beer flight, uh, four mini beers, nine bucks. They're all pretty good. But what Molly really likes is they have a artisanal string cheese appetizer for six fifty. It's the main reason why we stopped here. Somebody else we were drinking with at another brewery said you got to come here. It's in an old church, and she was like, ah, and then she heard there was string cheese. We got really excited. But uh, the bar itself is really interesting. <laughs> Totally built in an old church. The kitchen is where the altar would be. <laughs> it's neat. Cool place. Well, my friends, that'll do it for our time here in Niagara Falls. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, showing off tons and tons of the cool things to do here in Niagara Falls. And that's just the stuff that we did or the stuff that we saw. There are still so many things that we did not get to do on this trip. 
And uh, I mean, you can make a whole video out about that. Like we didn't go to the water park, we didn't go to Bird Kingdom, we didn't go in the Upside Down House. Um, that's all the other fun stuff. There was a magic show that uh, that looked like it could have been kind of cool. We didn't go up the tower. Like there's there's so many things to do here. I didn't get to go to that fun house. Uh, we could have gone through like five haunted houses. A lot of stuff. There was a Canadian themed dinner show we didn't do, yeah. and that that sounded just bonkers. Um, now Molly, this was your first time ever coming to Niagara Falls. What were your your thoughts on the experience? Um, I loved it. I loved how it was a mix between the nature and what you think of whenever you think of the falls and the touristy trap and the there's so many different, you know, museums and this and that. I don't know what you want to call the tourist trap stuff. Attractions. Attractions, attractions yeah. yeah. There's so many different attractions. I loved it. I would definitely come back. Um, and as you said, we didn't touch on half the stuff that was here. Yeah. I mean, we didn't do Journey Behind the Falls. Mm -hmm. We didn't do anything on the American side. No. So there's a lot of stuff. Uh, did you have some favorites? Favorite things to do? Uh, Hornblower was definitely my number one. Which is, um, I mean, that's the thing you think of yeah. when you think of Niagara Falls. Yeah, so that, I really enjoyed it. It was yeah. something that was on my bucket list, and I did it. And I would pay again to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, I also liked uh, Niagara's Fer Fury. That, that was yeah, very was impressive. Really cool. A very, very Especially impressive. being like big theme park people and loving themed entertainment. Oh, yeah. Like that was 100% top-notch, super expensive themed entertainment. Yeah, the show was much better than I thought it was. Yeah. So... Um, for me, I love the whole thing. You know, I uh, I, I love getting on the fun passes and doing things I wouldn't normally do, but I, I did them because they were on a fun pass. And I, I love going to cheesy wax museums and you know Ripley's and stuff like that. And then I even the simple stuff like walking along Clifton Hill and seeing you know every store having an animatronic trying to get you to come into their attraction. Like I love animatronics. Yeah. So I mean, I think that's neat. Um, even, you know, Marineland, I had a fun time at Marineland. Marineland. I got to ride the Dragon Mountain roller coaster, got to go on that drop tower with the view of the falls. I got to feed a bear an ice cream cone. Um, so that was, I had a lot of fun there as well. Overall, it's quite the destination. I, I would recommend you come out here. If you got questions, let us know in the comment section below. You know, we'll do our best to get back to you if we uh, knew, could help you out. Uh, if you're coming up to Niagara Falls, you're probably going to have a good time. Hope this video helped you out. And uh, thanks for watching.